that's where we're putting in at in this uh, river that kicked my ass last year. Hope it don't kick my ass again. That's all I got to say about that. All right, so we just launched from back over there, and we have started our 32-mile adventure into a wild river. So, hoo ya! Now, I hadn't been filming much going over the log jams because it's dangerous and I'm kind of busy. I don't have time to start to film and go over the log jams. But I'll tell you what to do. Go over that right there. Then I'm going to go under that right there. Then there's a sandbar up there. And I'm going to go over that in that shallow water. And then it may be, depending on how horrible it is, I'm either going to go over that log or I'm going to go around. 10 feet and then drop back in the water but I don't think it's that bad so I'm probably going to go over that log and then back in the water so that's how that works so we are going over the uh, next log jam and already came through that and uh, actually I'm getting better at this and that's where I have confidence to stand somewhat on these medium sized ones this is about 8 inches across it's only been about a minute since the last log jam. Yeah, but we're making progress. You can actually see it right back there. Uh-huh, that one back there was the one. But, uh, it's so much better than when we first started. We actually are log jam experts now. You're looking at a log jam expert. This is his log jam expert co-worker. Yeah. Alright, check this out. I got this tree right here with these berries on it. And, get that one. Get it. And eat it. Don't eat the leaves. I got my fire right there. And it reminds me of sitting by the TV. Relaxing. Uh, so I use the MSR cook set. Because it is stainless steel. And it doesn't break. And because it's easy to clean. And it has a frying pan. It also uses a lid and a bowl. And comes with a two liter pot and a one and a half liter pot and anything bigger than that is really hard to fit in your backpack so that's why I use it and it works great and right now I'm heating up water to make some ramen noodles this is a the 64 ounce clean canteen and you see it's in the fire and I'm using it to boil water with and then when it gets done I'm gonna rake the fire away from it with a stick and then remove the canteen but it's heating up really fast I'm uh, boiling my water you can see it boiling right out the top and that now is clean drinking water although it's gonna be a little dirty but it's good to go this is the uh, clean canteen 64 ounce and I boiled the water and I'm using the MSR pot holder to get it on off the fire and it's the best tool for the job because it won't fuck up your threads and it's lightweight and it just grasp it and it's really steady as you can see um, that's a heavy canteen now but yeah I really like it so it works nicely after I boil the water I put it in the creek to cool off and I put it by the main flow so that it cools off very fast and uh, it works really nice all the heat flows downstream this is the part of the river that's very nice, very nice, and it's perfectly clear so far, relatively speaking. We had a couple of live jams, but no severe ones. And looking forward to finding this waterfall that has been rumored. So, yeah. Uh, I gotta stop filming. Looks like we're gonna hit this log. No. No. We got it. Yeah. The canoe has a shallow draft, which makes it great. And, uh,. Is it facing you or away? You can see the bottom. The water is tea colored. It's really pretty. And we're out in the wilderness. So it's very cool. Day two. Day two. And uh, I'm really enjoying the trip now. I mean, until I hit another log jam, then I have to get out and work. But, I mean, look at this. It's, it's beautiful. Beautiful day. The river conditions are nice. Not too damn fast. And, uh,. I really like being able to see under the water in this part of the river. It makes me feel better about alligators. So, yeah. Shit, 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 shit. Yeah, just hit a log right there. It gets a little hairy. 
Me neither. All right. Well, hey, this is cool up here. I gotta get some uh, pretty country right around here. Just on my grass. This is a swamp, and it's actually really fertile. Lots of berry bushes around. These smilax. Just I just foraged. I didn't put it on film, but I'm really. It's really nice. It's be really hard to starve out here. An example of how you can confuse plants. These plants are asymmetrical and come to a point. And these are blueberries. There's edible. These over here, the points are not pointy. And uh, these are bad. Don't eat these. Well, these are also bigger. And these are something else. Don't eat them. Ever. This is cool. I found these... Uh, Berries, pick them right here, and then you eat them. And the reason you can tell they're blueberries is because the leaves are asymmetrical, perfect on each end, and uh, they're small leaves. Whereas compared to something like this, you don't fucking touch. So. These are blueberries, and they're really good, actually. Mhm. Mm and there's hundreds of them. It'd be really hard to starve here. Now, I hadn't been filming going over this shit because it's dangerous to do. And, you know, I don't want to have to be filming and using both my hands, but... <coughs> This is one of the ones we're going to go around. Because it's just too goddamn big. Too fucking big. And. Going around so that. We don't have to go through all the. Pain and the hassle of. Going ten feet in one hour. I'm not doing it. So. We're going to go around. And camp here because we're. It's already late in the day. I might go explore the other side though. It looks kind of nice over there. I gotta use that tree as a bridge. It's gotta be a cold one tonight. So, using the uh, 36 inch bow saw, we're harvesting firewood. Needs a little bit more. But yeah, pretty cool. And um, I have to sleep in a sleeping bag. It's rated to 40 degrees. It's going to be 43 degrees. This rating shit is bullshit. Because it was fucking freezing last night. And it was in the 50s. So it's going to be even worse tonight. You got her. Touch out! Hey, I still have the saw. <laughs> I thought you were going to be the victim of a giant man-sized deadfall. Oh, yeah, man, so <laughs> That's what it looked like. It was about that size. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I got, well... All right, got high five, like though, it. for real. That was awesome. So, got enough wood for the night, so it's going to be a cold one. I am cooking on uh, coals and making cornbread. I'm going to make a shitload of cornbread so I don't have to cook for a couple of days It'd be nice just do all my cooking right now and uh, I got plastic bags to put all the stuff in I slept in the SOL escape and at 46 degrees it was miserable absolutely miserable um, do not buy the, the uh, SOL escape anything you can see it being used for is a rain cover for your sleeping bag and that's just about it so do not buy the SOL Escape. You're shit out of luck if you buy the SOL Escape.
Okay, I'm having to go on this shit. It's like eight feet in the air. And there's my friend down here. We just went under this. So I'm having to go over to meet him on the other side on my uh, river expedition. And it's pretty treacherous picking your footing. I'm just gonna... Pick my footing now. Go up this cliff. Over here. Ugh! And I've done this a lot. This is the first time I've sort of tried to film a log jam. Ooh. Snack on the way. Blueberries. Mmm. Mmm. These are fresh. Oh my god, these are good. Mmm. Mmm. I gotta go. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm, that was yummy. Mmm. Oh my god, here's some more. There's the one. Two. Yeah, I know. It's making a good video. Anything you would like to say before I turn the camera off? We're almost finished. <laughs> You're smiling. All right, I'm gonna put the camera up. We've done this a thousand times, but you know, this time maybe Craig will fall in. Maybe. So there's the boat right there. This is one to try to film this one log jam because it's just too much work to film the really huge ones because they're too dangerous. You'll have logs like 15 feet of water and logs crisscrossed under the water, and when you fall in, you're gonna hit two or three logs and. You got under, you, you can get caught under a log with your life vest and drown, and it'd be a really horrible way to go. Actually, if you could start it, I can film it. And what are you gonna do? I'll take the chance and walk around. For my documentary of the trip. Alright, I'll come help you if you need help. You need help? Yeah, just look no, I got it. Alright. It's some yeah. we need two people to pull it. Okay, I'm coming. So after getting through the uh, log jams, you're briefly rewarded with a peaceful, serene river that's tamed and not fast moving, because that was the rapid part right there, and clear waters. Also, <clears throat> this is the part of the river where an alligator would be, so you wouldn't want to swim here, but... It sure is nice to look at and pretty and beautiful. Okay. We're about to do a portage because we have to go over this log jam right here. And it's a little over 60 yards long. And uh, we're going to have to go back through here. And we just couldn't go over all that stuff because it's just too much. And we're all decided that. It would be better just to go around it because it's a straight path and we won't have to risk a mechanical energy injury. So yeah, I'm just gonna snack on my cornbread. We're taking a break too. Just a note, you slip on one of these log jams and fall and impale yourself, don't try to put your guts back in because you'll get very infected. And the infection will be inside of you. Found this old brick thing, a piece of like rebar iron sticking out of it. Not even rebar, it's older than that. I'm not sure what the hell it is. So if you know what the hell it is, let me know. 
And there's an old, still blocked off, in the middle of the river. But uh, I think we'd certainly do it. It would take a few more days. And uh, I got enough food to get down the river. And it would be easy, considering that it's getting a lot better with the log jams or not as difficult and we're making good time considering so I think we could go what we did in the last two days in just today if we were to keep pushing on and it wouldn't be too difficult I just want to say I'm disappointed that the expedition is teeters on failure I'm not very happy they are off to search for a road and uh, I was prepared to stay out here you know, I thought we would do 10 miles a day. It's about 30 miles and we'd be done. And uh, it's going to take longer than that because we're only moving about 3 miles a day. And it's been picking up the pace today. And the farther we go down the river, the easier it has become. Now, eventually, when you go down the river far enough past the halfway point, there are no log jams. It's all clear sailing from there. So, my point was that, you know, after coming this far where it's starting to get better why give up now and you know I see what great explorers like Lewis and Clark did they say it's impossible you know I mean just because it's hard doesn't mean you give up and I think that's an important life lesson is just because something is hard doesn't necessarily mean you give up I mean I haven't been defeated yet I still have a boat which I didn't have last year because it popped and I still have food, a backpack, and all my gear. It's all there. And as long as that boat's there, it's like having a knife. You know, you, you can make it down the river. Now it takes two people to steer that boat, and it's very smart to bring a friend. A lot of bad situations have happened because people don't bring a friend with them. Because if you bring a friend, they can go get help. I mean, most injuries are not that severe. They're just like a twisted ankle or... A broke leg, something non-life-threatening. And riding in a canoe, being able to have help, even if you're injured, means that you're going to make it out. I've actually enjoyed it. I like a little physical labor. It's fun. You know, I think it's good for the soul. But that's just my opinion. I don't give up. I just don't. I don't like giving up. I don't like giving up unless it's clear that I have been defeated and I need to get out of a situation. I don't think that I've been defeated. I've got food, and when I get home, I'm going to see just how long that food bag will last when it's full. Because I know what's in each food bag, and I know I was prepared. And I know that if I were to keep going down the river, it was hopefully with a buddy, because a buddy can help you, is that it would be a success, and it's only 19 miles away. So, we've gone about 6 miles, it seems, on the map. That, it would be very, very hard, but it would not be impossible. And, I mean, look at the beautiful country. You, there's birds all around. Everything's all wild here. It's very nice. I really like it out here. I had hoped to spend some time in the wild, but, you know, I always wanted to bring somebody because I have a son, and it's, I just want somebody to know what happens to me or somebody to help me go get firewood if I'm hurt or whatever. So, I just don't believe that it's impossible I believe that it's very possible because we've come this far we've gone through the hardest part the hardest part is over so if the hardest part is over it doesn't make sense to quit now when the easier part is up ahead we've gone through the Dice Creek that I knew was going to be tough we've gone through the first part of Perdido River before it flares out and turns into a river and yeah that was really horrible and we would made really bad progress but we've done well today. They're saying, oh, it's going to take too long. All in all, this expedition is healthy. But I guess it's irrelevant because I will be back to finish this. And uh, I've still got a lot of river left to explore that's unexplored. Nobody comes down here because it's hard. But that doesn't mean that it's not worth looking at. It's a beautiful country. And I will be back. All right, the expedition failed. So, <clears throat> the uh, trip, uh, the battery died, and the game ward came and unlocked the gate, and uh, <clears throat> our friend's wife 
picked us up. I wanted to keep going down the river, but I didn't have a boat, so I came with them. And I'll have to do the rest of the river sometime later when I can find somebody else to go. So, uh, expedition to find the falls failed because it was going to take longer than expected. But I expected the unexpected, so I had packed uh, lots and lots of extra food. And it could have done it, but it would have taken a while. So, they informed me that they were leaving. So, uh, as soon as they found a place to leave, they left. And, uh, I couldn't very well go down the river by myself because it takes two people to take a canoe over locks. So, I left. So, I wanted to shoot a quick video on what I took for my trip. Because people claim I packed too much. I don't think so. I took a hat. I took a knife. And in my knife is a magnesium and flint. A multi-tool. And a whistle. I took a bow saw. A life jacket. <coughs> some protein powder that doubles as milk for my cereal. I took a radio, a cell phone, a flashlight, a change of batteries, and a solar charger. I took some napkins, which double as paper towels and toilet paper. I have a spare change of clothes, including a sweater made out of polyester. Polyester, uh, Long John's, a camouflage shirt, much like this one right here, and matching camouflage nylon pants. All nylon, no cotton. I took one extra large 28 by 28 inch. It's a towel slash bandana. Works well for that. Also works good to keep you warm or your head warm at night. I took some leather gloves because I have to cook with a fire. I do not have a stove, a mosquito net, some socks, some, an ace bandage in case I sprained an ankle. These right here will keep you from having to do something serious hiking on a bad ankle. And I took some multivitamins and a little bit of medicine. I took a uh, multivitamin, fish oil, uh, vitamin C because I have a cold. And um, all these are painkillers, several different kinds of painkillers, and uh, so Claritin for my allergies, and also some Benadryl for Benadryl because it works for allergies and various other things, and some caffeine pills. Over here, I have the backpack, and I took my lightweight tripod for family. I took my Crocs for camp shoes. I took my ground pad right here and inside my ground pad is some egg crate foam which helps to keep me from sleeping on the hard ass ground and in here is my clean canteen <clears throat> and here is a fishing pole a compass a fishing and sewing kit and my eating tool and an extra plastic bag in this pouch right here is my poncho which doubles as my shelter and in here is my uh, my extra glasses, my flashlight, my, ex my backup flashlight. Cause I have two flashlights. I carry one, and then I carry another one in case that one breaks. And I didn't carry that. I found that. I got some fish bait right here, which I'm gonna actually take out. I'll take out my fishing pole too. I have some lighters. 
in a vitamin bottle with some cotton which can be used as a dressing or also to start fires have some extra fishing line right here that can be used as for sewing and I have my cook kit it's an MSR cook kit and it's a frying pan a two liter pot and a one and a half liter pot <coughs> In the very bottom, there's my sleeping bag, and that's it. <laughs> so that's all I took, and I still get accused of packing too much, but I did not pack too much at all. And I did not take this, this is a double-sided blanket that I'm going to be using as my poncho from now on, because it's more versatile, and I can use it to treat hypothermia. <coughs> so, um, yeah, that's what I took. And the bow saw... It got a lot of use going down this river with all the logs.